All right, everyone, this is Grant. This is State of the Spark. Thank you for checking in. Good morning for those who are actually checking in with us in the morning. Uh, we apologize to those who tried to grab our Facebook Live feed. Uh, we've nixed that. That wasn't working out this morning, but that's okay. Thank God for technology. We're going to record this thing and get it uploaded to you just the same. So I'm super pumped about this morning's show. Um, I'm touching on a few things that I think are relevant and important to everyone. We're talking about marketing. And in the State of the Spark Freedom Framework, uh, the business framework is MSPBA. And uh, for my coaching clients, you guys have been familiar with this, and that's marketing, sales, production, bookkeeping, and admin, and it's a little bit of a funnel. It's the best way to simplify your business. If you've gone through, I don't know, anything like uh, Catapult, or if you've done co-starters nationwide, or maybe you took a course like I did at Maryland Tech, uh, one of the classes was Business Model Canvas. These are all pretty complicated if you've ever done them. I even taught the co-starters class. And depending on the maturity of your business, the maturity of your paradigm, some of those groups can be highly beneficial. We have a framework called MSPBA because it's simple and you can get up and running quickly. And the short summary, again, coaching clients have gotten much more in-depth uh, accountability and coaching on this, but MSPBA simply stands for, uh, like I said, marketing, sales, production, bookkeeping, and admin. And each one of those, you need a primary system in each one. And, uh, and we could talk more in depth. So today, in today's market, we're talking about marketing. And where this came from, if you saw the show yesterday, you know that I apologize to Lisa Rasigliano for not getting back to her. And guess what? I didn't get back to her again. If I could show you the list, I'm sure you have a similar list if you're running a business or a family or a, a, a city, like some of the people watching. We have uh, some people working at the city who watch the show, which I'm super proud of. Um, uh, you guys are running, you have a long running list and I didn't get to Lisa Rasigliano. So I wanted a case study your website and not just your website, but her web presence. And so we'll get to that in a quick second. And I think you can glean a lot of good information on what your emergency response should be to, your, to getting your web presence aligned. For those in Florida anyway, I'm looking outside here. For those in Florida, we're in a lockdown for the next 30 days, right? Till about uh, the end of April. And this is plenty of time for you to get your web presence up and running. So we can talk about messaging. We could talk about sales. We could talk about what to do with leads. We could do uh, we could talk about a lot of that, but this morning we're going to talk about marketing in times of crisis and specifically our notes to Lisa. So Lisa, this is partly dedicated to you um, uh, and your patience with us and for being such a great client, but this is to all the people in goals and gratitude and small business. You guys have been with us a while. Thank you for being fans for a long time. And I hope that we're going to, and, and honestly, the goals and gratitude people might've heard a lot of this in different places. You're still going to get a lot out of today's show because we're going to, I'm going to synchronize this for you. Um, and how to do this in a linear fashion. And honestly, with a good afternoon, three or four hours, excuse me, in three or four hours, you could have this same setup for yourself done. If you did it focused, you could always read out, reach out. Hey, shameless plug. You could always reach out to the Spark Sites group, which I'm super proud of. Marissa has been killing it. Um, she's been doing a lot of rebranding or refreshing our brand with Spark, Spark Bookkeeping, Spark Sites, but also she does this for clients and it is gorgeous. We did this for uh, one of the clients, the Hospital Doulas. Check out the Hospital Doulas. Um, they have their own branding. Like we didn't do their overall branding, but uh, we did a great job. I'm very proud of how we rolled and translated that brand to their social media presence. Super proud of that. So we're going to cover that today. But as usual, uh, since I'm drinking coffee and, and this is our Spark Gratitude mug, I don't even know what possessed Marissa one day. There's the Spark logo. It's a morning reminder, cup of joe right here on the counter to drink a cup of gratitude, folks. Like I know it's crazy out there. I know that you are having like the craziest time. I know the messaging coming at you from every angle is insane. I cannot, uh, you know, they're saying this is, we've never seen this before. People are generalizing. If you, if you talk to anyone, they're like, you've never seen anything like this before. And we all, you know, most people assume they're talking about the pandemic. Well, we could talk a little bit about SARS and MERS. We could talk about how this is SARS. And we could talk about how this is also different, radically different than the flu. No, we've never seen anything like this. You're right. I'll tell you what I see when I hear this phrase, you haven't seen anything like this. There's so many other elements going on. There's the technology element. We're able to stay connected. It's insane, right? Well, actually, that's the primary one. Everything else out off the technology is derivative, right? The DoorDash, the Uber Eats, um, essential services, 
Um, even the conspiracy people who are talking about, and I'm not disregarding them, but I'm not jumping in that camp necessarily. Some are saying the conspiracy that this was made to get Trump out of office. Other people are saying this was a conspiracy to keep Trump in office so that he's a wartime president. We're seeing a lot of firsts, right? But really those firsts are all come from the technology. You can complain and pick sides on the battle. You can bitch and complain. You can, you can be productive all because of the technology. So I think when I hear it's never been like this before, uh, we could talk about the technology. And so I'm drinking a cup of gratitude because we're able to still try to maintain our businesses, try at least, or we can have the ability to pivot our businesses because of technology. So I'm going into the gratitude section of the morning show and that gratitude is I, well, and it's unrelated. I actually wrote this earlier. I wrote that I am grateful for technology. So I went off on technology by default just because I think about it so often and it affects so many areas of us anthropologically. But what I am grateful for, the real gratitude thing that I finally ended up with was I'm grateful for Foxhole Friends. I think I said this uh, phrase uh, yesterday on yesterday's show. I'm grateful for Foxhole Friends. And Foxhole Friends are this. Foxhole Friends are these are people who when crisis hits, they're hard after it. Do you have any foxhole friends? I'd love to hear about this in the comments. Who are your foxhole friends? I'd love to hear about this in the comments. Uh, share them. If you're watching the show later, that's fine. I'd love to hear who your foxhole friends are. My foxhole friends are people that are hard after it. When the market hit, they either already had a plan or took the time to create a plan. You know what I'm talking about? They took time to create a plan. And then they executed that plan. Now they didn't take forever. They haven't been cool in their heels forever. Like we all have our down days. Like even, even um, some of my closest friends, I was just on, just on the phone with a friend that I haven't talked to. I talk to him once a week, twice a week. But when we get together, it's rich. This is James Joseph of Joseph Motors. When we get together, it's rich. And he just texted me, hey, I need something with the website. And I handed that off. And then last night we got on the phone. He called me at like 6.30. And mind you, I get going. This is six. I've been up since four. I'm running 12 hour days. I'm sure a lot of you were putting in extra time. And he calls me at 6.30. I had just sat down. I had a drink in my hand and we had just started our show. And he called me at 6.30. I answered the phone right away and he heard it in my voice. He's like, man, are you okay? I'm like, I'm like, okay, dude, I'm fine. How are you doing? And I heard it in his voice. These are the vocal patterns of people who are just exhausted from the fray. Foxhole friends are friends that you create permanent relationships with because you jump in the foxhole together. My only regret is that James and I don't have a specific business we're working on together. I'd love to get on the show with him. Derek and Jill are another two people that I haven't worked deeply with Jill. I've worked with Jill in the far, far past. I've had, I've been a sideline fan of what Jill's been doing a long, long time with her and Allie Smith and helping people. Derek and I have been good friends. These are foxhole friends because even though they retreated, if you will, to a cabin in the woods. They're staying in the fray and supporting people. They're starting, they rebranded. They, they've engaged this season of life and, and put out a brand called The Wellsmiths. That came out this week. I'm sure you guys are watching somewhere. I'm sure you'll post below. We'll post a link. The, I mentioned The Wellsmiths. They're getting that up and running. They're innovating. Adam and Brittany Welchel. I raved about Adam yesterday. Go watch yesterday's show, Adam, if you need an ego boost, brother. These are Foxhole friends. These are people that are letting this event shape their character. Foxhole friends are friends who you guys huddle together, whether it's technologically by distance or actually physically, and you, you embrace the suck, you let the bombs go off, but you're doing it together and it, it forges new bonds. Are you having new bonds formed today? If you have Foxhole friends, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Please share and rave on the people in your life that are Foxhole friends. So, I'm going to jump right into marketing. Let's get right into this. Um, so as I said, uh, as, as you know, yesterday I jumped up here and I shared with you from my reading, right? And this is my morning reading. I sit down and I pick through each of these and some of you need to just read straight through. I actually need to jump around. And I mentioned yesterday, a lot of my reading is framed on um, the Total Life Experience Freedom Framework, the TLE. And the TLE, the Total Life Experience Freedom Framework is fitness and health, healthy, happy relationships, work we, work we enjoy, and spirituality. So fitness and health starts because we're having, uh, whether you consider ourselves a spirit having a physical experience or a physical being having a spiritual experience, I don't care. This is the operating, this little thing right here. This is the, uh, 
the meat suit uh, that you've been given and uh, fitness and health lead our mind. That's why when it comes to Derek and Jill and their work, uh, uh, it's both spiritual and physical. They do deal with a lot of breathing, a lot of meditating. Um, so fitness and health. So today in my reading also happens to tie into the marketing. So I was, I was doing a lot of reading and I read these things, but then I also do a ton of industry reading. If I might spend a half an hour on reading these books that I shared with you, I might spend another hour, not just in the news per se. I don't, I don't follow the news. I don't look at CNN. I don't look at MSNBC, but I do have my feeds. And my feeds are, uh, I use a service called Feedly. Check it out. It's a great service. I've been using it for years. And I get the blog feeds of, of the people and the voices I'm really following. And I aggregate those. And then in the morning when I do my morning reading, that's my internet. It's my feed. It's my front page of the internet of what's going on. Some of the voices I love, the guy from WordPress, Matt Mullenweg. Um, I do follow Inc., but I kind of just skip that. I do follow Forbes, and I skip down through that. Just, so I read a lot. And one of the articles I came across is um, we're going to tee up and do a precursor here to our case study. So I promise we're going to talk about marketing, which we're going to do right now. And then I promise we're going to do a case study. But I want, for those of you who can't stick around for the full uh, case study, because uh, you, really, you don't really care, maybe you've got your, your, your marketing plan or your web presence plan on lockdown, that's fine. I'm going to cover these principles, though, because these apply to even you. So I'm going to get my, I have my notes over here, so bear with me as I kind of go through the notes. Um, but real quick, um, it's marketing in times of crisis. So what are you doing to market? in times of crisis. So there's, there's three major principles I want to share with you. So in times of crisis, you're going to cut expenses. Again, if you're, going to, if you're seeing or going to participate in our critical quarter coaching program, uh, that should be coming out today, I think, today. Uh, our critical quarter coaching program, we're going to cover how to cut expenses strategically. But here's the point. You're going to cut expenses, but the number one step you need to start doing in crisis, people do this. When, pe when crisis happens, like psychologically, physically, and in their business, they do this. They freak out. They bundle up. They contract. That is a natural response. I'm not going to judge anybody that does that. But as it comes to your business to stay viable, you, you need to do the opposite in one of the MSPBA areas. In MSPBA, there's one area that you don't cut. That is marketing. Now, when I say don't cut, I mean this. This is the first of the three marketing principles of marketing in times of crisis. Number one, cut strategically. No smash. <laughs> when I was thinking about this this morning, I thought of uh, Avengers 1, when Steve Rogers, when Captain America pointed to Hulk at the very end, when Hulk kind of had his mind and he was a little bit in control of the Hulk, and he said, Hulk, smash. And Hulk was like, yeah, you know. So crisis hits, these alien creatures come out of the sky, a pandemic attacks your body, and we know the economic crisis, it has not hit yet. When people say that it hasn't, we haven't peaked yet, I know that they think they're talking about the pandemic like they're actually a epidemiologist and know what's going on. They don't. We don't know if it's peaked. We don't know if it hasn't peaked. We don't know anything about this. But what we can say for certain is the economic impact has not peaked. And, and I, I, I see that this is going to be a real challenge. Whether manufactured or natural doesn't matter. It's coming. So when you cut your expenses, we know you want to contract. But I want to encourage you, cut strategically, no smash. <laughs> Here's, here's a, a quick thought on how to cut strategically your marketing. For a short term, for a week or two as we're into this, cut performance-based marketing. So there's two major classes of marketing, performance-based marketing and messaging-based marketing. When we talk about empathetic marketing, when they talk, like right now, everyone's saying, well, you need to put out an ad, but be empathetic with it. You need to do this or that, but be empathetic with it. So one of the first critical response things is to begin, instead of contract, to promote. You have to do the opposite when it comes to your business because people, there's a breath of space where all businesses contract like a snail back into their shell or like a turtle back into its shell and it's, it's hardening itself. You can do that for a lot of areas. You can cut floating subscriptions. You can cut the gym membership. You can cut a lot of, of fluff. But when it comes to marketing, take a breath and get strategic. For a short term, cut your performance-based marketing. Hey, on pay-per-clicks for this for the next week, 
I'm not saying you're going to cut it entirely. I know the marketers are going to come out and say, Grant told you to cut your performance. He told your paid ads. He told you to qu quit your paid ads. Yes, for short term. Because people are being bombarded by the me too's right now. They're being bombarded by, at first. They're being bombarded by the profiteers. Hey, and it's kind of skeezy. Hey, you're hurting. I've got a loan program for you. And it's just, it's totally slimy. Stop your me too marketing. And that's often paid advertising. So just pause. The reason is, is I want you to redirect your effort to the messaging marketing. I want you to get empathetic in your messaging for a minute. I want you to think, hey, don't just make this me too. I think Toyota, if I'm not mistaken, and um, uh, Travelocity are two that I'm thinking of that had very empathetic ad spots. Yes, they were ads. Yes, they showed in the Toyota ad. Yes, they showed their truck. But what they also said is, listen, we're just here to support you. There was no 15% off APR financing, below MSRP. There was none of that. Yes, they showed their product or their service. They showed their brand, really. It was just their brand. And Captain Obvious from, I think it's Travelocity. I think it's Travelocity. Captain Obvious, he basically stopped and kicked the dirt out of his, out of his shoe. And he said, we're here to support you. So when you, uh, so that was principle one, cut strategically. Tons of things to cut, but promotion should not get cut. You don't need to harden your shell when it comes to promotion. In other areas of your business, yes, get conservative. But it comes to your marketing, you need to start promoting. The second, invest now in second wave or second order effects. Invest now in second order or second wave effects or beyond, third wave. What I mean by that is this. Right now, a lot of people's messaging and marketing is corona. So I don't know if you noticed this, for like two days, Spark even was putting thumbnails on its YouTube about Corona recovery video, whatever, Corona recovery. We did this for like 24 hours, 36 hours, something like that. And then we stopped because we realized this isn't the biggie. We need to get, so you don't chase markets, you race markets. What that means is as the market downturns, you're like, oh no, and you follow them over the cliff. And so the highs and lows of the market are going like this and you're just tailing. You actually want to be racing the market so that you look even a day or a week ahead of the curve. This is what's coming. Economy changes are coming. And instead of using COVID language, corona language, virus language, you need to talk about economy. You need to talk about jobs. You need to talk about small business. So that's second wave. That's the second wave of what's coming. Invest now in messaging for second wave. Yes, if you have 10 posts over the next two days, which you should, if you have 10 posts over the next two days, Two of those should be, three of those should be Corona virus adjustment today, but half or more of them should be about what are you going to do about your economy? Because people, it won't take people till today's Friday afternoon. It won't take people till Friday afternoon and through the weekend to really start thinking, ooh, I was furloughed and this looks like it's going to last a little long. 30, it's only 30 days, but the average person doesn't have, what is it, $400 of savings? The average individual. Now, I know most of you are business owners and we're talking about your business, but we have to think about second order effects. So don't just, so I think about you guys as my clients, right? If you're in goals and gratitude group and watching there, you're my clients. If you're in the, you know, the, the spark ecosystem or one of my coaching clients, yes, I'm talking to you about you and your business, but I am often actually prescribing things based on thinking about second order effects, your clients. And if your clients are businesses, you need to be thinking about those clients and their clients. That's how this works. So, so invest now in messaging that is focused on second order effect, uh, effects. Then once you nail that and you feel like you are in rapport with the audience, then roll out your paid ads. Third, read the room. Hey bro, read the room. You ever be at a party? Like read the room. Someone's telling off color jokes. Bro, read the room. Now, if you're a comedian, you want to say rude things. Great. Comedians actually are really good at reading the room, even if they're saying off-color things, but you and I are probably not comedians. <laughs> read the room. Now, empathy is, all, is the order of the day, right? Everyone's talking about how empathetic communications. We need more empathy. Listen, tell me how or get off the soapbox. Like, I get it. Like, now, back up. I get empathy, right? But a lot of the way these people are writing these posts, they're not adding anything helpful to how to be more empathetic. Sometimes reading the room is also the opposite. Sometimes reading the room is standing up strong and being a leader. Boss girls and boss guys out there, sometimes reading the room isn't just being sensitive. Sometimes it's being firm. 
And in times of crisis, you need to be sensitive. Empathy simply means be sensitive. It doesn't necessarily mean gentle, right? So empathy needs to read the room. And sometimes the room needs you to calm down. Sometimes the room needs you to stand up, read the room and respond appropriately. If someone is getting out of control on either of the conspiracies, right now the conspiracies are both sided, right? Right now the conspiracies are like, oh, it's to get Trump out. Oh, it's to it, it, the stay at homers versus the go outers. Pick a side, man. If people are getting extremists, read the room and respond accordingly. Not just with your opinion. Leadership isn't just imposing your opinion. Leadership is standing up for the macro goal. So read the room. So cut strategically, no smash. Invest now in second order thinking and read the room. Those are my three marketing principles. If that's all you came for, hey, great. We're obviously going to be talking more about marketing as we unfold this thing. The next thing I want to talk about is specifically applying this to my prescription for uh, our good friend, Lisa Rosigliano. Lisa owns the business l &R Wildlife Services. Lisa, thank you for being a client as long as you have. Sincerely appreciate it. Thank you for doing what you've done. Lisa's actually been, uh, I've been a client of Lisa's at our old house. Uh, we had some smell coming through and she found, believe it or not, rats and all kinds of stuff. She crawled under the house. You know, she's intense, man. And if you've ever talked to uh, Lisa, she's super fun. She's straightforward. She tells you, she speaks her mind. She tells you like it is. She's a no nonsense person. She has great service um, and we love working with her. So Lisa, if you're watching or when you're watching, thank you so much. This is about you. This section is about you and we're going to help you uh, deliver what I think you need to do right now to get leads. Now, Lisa knows me from all of my repertoire, right? So, so she's a client for Spark Sites. Um, she's been to many of my workshops. Uh, and she also knows me as a sales trainer. She knows me as a small business trainer. Those are, those are my two major training workshop stuff that we do throughout the year is sales training and, and small business training. Um, so she knows that about me. So she came to me. So Lisa, we're going to focus right now on your web presence. And then we can circle up and talk about other things, offline things. Um, but I wanted to do this. So if anyone's watching, um, you're welcome to follow along because I'm going to rapid fire some of these things. Um, and then I'll post these in the show notes as kind of a summary punch list of things you could be doing. So what can you learn from this case study of Lisa's? You're going to learn um, two major principles. These are two major principles. One, you got to show that the lights are on. And two, you got to get relevant quickly, very quickly. The, the, Marissa keeps saying this, my wife. She keeps saying, the ground is shifting so quickly. You're not joking the ground is shifting very quickly. If you have not been digitized with your marketing, if you have not been blogging, if you've only like post the odd post, if you have not been updating your, your Facebook banner or your Facebook profile or your LinkedIn banner, if you have not been posting on Google My Business, I would say you are not digitized. And right now you are realizing, oh shit, I have got to digitize to stay relevant. Welcome to the conversation. I'm so glad you're here. You absolutely need to be digitized. And so in Lisa's case, Lisa and I, uh, have a friendly conversation about the fact that she needs to be blogging. Lisa is not the type to ever sit at her desk. She's an outdoors person. She is working all the time, especially, I think, and Lisa, you can correct me. I think it's bat season right now or will be soon. And so she works a lot. She is a wildlife removal expert. And we talked a lot a little season back ago about getting some SEO going for her. And I said, Lisa, you've got to be blogging, you got to be posting. And she acknowledges, I get it, Grant. I agree with you. That is the thing to do. But she will not sit at her computer and do that. So a lot of you have also followed the same track. When I talk about blogging, everyone says, oh, I get word of mouth. Thanks. How does word of mouth work in a digitized world? I hear you. I get a lot of word of mouth too. That's not a marketing plan. That's like a baseline. And a lot of you have been okay with baseline income. You're not a high growth company. Spark for Spark Sites and Spark Bookkeeping. I wouldn't even say those companies are necessarily high growth, but we know we get a lot of word of mouth and that's like baseline. So let's get into it. A, I just have, let's see here. A, B, C, D, that's it. So here we go. A, update your website, Lisa, and the rest of you. We have already offered to do a free 
COVID notification just to show that the lights are on. So remember, your goal with all of these following recommendations is, is two principles. Number one, show that the lights are on. Number two, get relevant quickly. What does it mean that the lights are on? Sometimes it's that you'll post relevant information. And in, in the immediate case, you have to post a COVID notification. If you do not post how we're responding to the coronavirus, hey, you know, you might just say, hey, how we're responding to the coronavirus. We're not. We're an essential business in this business as usual. You might say, hey, we're closed temporarily or permanently or we don't even know. But you have to post. You have to show that the lights are on. People are going to websites in droves and they're just looking. They're looking. Do you even have a drop down banner? They're not even, I look at the analytics. Most of them are not even reading the notification. They're just seeing, did you post? And that is a signal. Are the lights on? If you noticed, you saw this on Google My Business, almost immediately it posted a little COVID notification. They're trying to nudge you to make sure that you're flickering the lights on on your business to show people it's basically what we call signaling. You're signaling to the public that the lights are on. So update. Um, so in Lisa's case, I looked at her website. You can go to wildlife removal expert. Oh, okay. I can't pull it down there. So let me pull it up over here. So it's wildlife removal expert. Um, and just Google or LNR services. Look at her website. Lisa, we need to get, and it's free. We'll do it. Spark sites will do it for you. You need to get your COVID notification up. The second thing is this. Add a bat season relevant banner. So I'm not going to tell you necessarily, I'm not going to prescribe that you need to talk about Corona in a wildlife website, but I would say add a bat, a relevant removal. Like what is the pest of the season? Right now, I think it's bats. That, that banner image, that needs to be changed. So get us a bat image and let's actually put text there. And that text needs to say, are you hearing sounds in your wall? Are you concerned about bats? It's bat season, call now. That's all I'd say, it's bat season, call now. At minimum, if anyone's ever visited your website, it shows that there's something changed and something new, but it also happens to be relevant. Lastly, log into your back office. You have the logins, we can get them to you again and familiarize with the blog because I'm about to subscribe you. So number one, update your website, show that the lights are on. Get us content of your response to COVID. Get that, just text or email support at stateofthespark.com. Christina will get it updated. Christina and Brandon will knock it out. The rock stars, they'll knock that out for you for free. And if that's all you do, that's, that's the one thing you should do on your website. The second thing you should do is update your bat season update banner. We could talk about design. We could talk about blogging. I see the rest of you, if you've brought her website up, you could be like, Grant, you know, it, we could do this, this, or that from design. I get it. I know Lisa. I know where she's at. She doesn't want to get into all that. We can update her design. We can do lots of stuff for her. Right now, that website suits Lisa, but she does need to update it to be relevant from a messaging perspective. So that's A, update your website. B, Lisa, hear me. Update your Google My Business. Now, I know that there was a, biz that there was a fiasco back in the day about ownership of your listing, I think. We need to make sure that you take ownership of your listing. And here's my quick points on this, four quick points. First off, Lisa, and to anyone else watching, update every single field in your Google My Business. Grant, what does this matter? This feels like it's monotonous, busy work. Google ranks you higher. Google ranks you higher. Google My Business, since, I, and, and this isn't just you, Lisa. I, I'm responding because everyone has pushed back on me for the last, what has it been, two years? I've been talking about Google My Business, and now that the emergency has hit, Google is ranking you higher. So if someone types in, I did this earlier this morning, and in Lisa's case, for Lisa's case, I typed in wildlife removal expert. I know that she's trying to rank for that. Though she came up on Google Maps as number one, congratulations, we've worked hard for that. You've worked hard for that, Lisa. Your sidebar listing didn't come up. You should come up in my zip code for wildlife removal expert. So this was the next thing I was going to say to you. So number one is fill out every single detail in your Google My Business listing. Go through each of the tabs on the left-hand side. Fill out every piece of information. Make sure it's updated, even if you're repeating old info. Why? Because Google sees that you hit the click save button and it refreshes its database. And it says, ooh, Lisa is paying attention to this listing. She's respecting our technology. We'll throw her a little Scooby snack and update her ranking. It does not, it's not going to push you to the top, top, but it'll nudge you the right direction. Then I want you to update the name of your listing, Lisa. Right now, 
Google My Business is allowing people to update the name of their business to let people know if you have curbside delivery uh, and a variety of reasons. In your case, Lisa, this is how we're going to leverage this. Yours says L&R Wildlife Services, but you're trying to rank for wildlife removal service, right? Just stick the word removal in there. Just click edit your name, stick the word removal and click save. Now, it might take Google My Business a little bit to update itself. That's great. That's fine. No problem, but do it. Do it and it'll update. Then I want you to post your last seven, no less than seven. The doctor is ordering you to post your last seven Facebook posts. Take the copy, take the video, just copy and paste it into your Google My Business posts. Just post them. Just post them. Boom, 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 boom. Grant, won't that feel like it's filling the funnel? Yes, but you need to be comfortable, Lisa, and those who haven't been doing this. You need to be comfortable with actually posting on Google My Business regularly. And I mean no less than seven. Isn't Grant exaggerating? No. <laughs> That's the prescription. The last seven Facebook posts, post them on Google My Business, one right after the other. Do it. Lastly, on your Google My Business page, on the front end, have people pull up your listing, have them go to Google, type in LNR Wildlife Removal Experts, have them uh, type that in, have them find your listing, and then use the have a question, that button, have a question. Have your friends, pick two or three friends who will just do three each, four each. Get five to seven questions on your Google My Business listing. And then Lisa, in your app, open up your app, pull up the Google My Business app and answer those questions immediately. Please do this. Please, for the love of all that is holy, do these four things. Update your name to include removal. Update your name if you haven't done this lately. <clears throat> post, uh, update, uh, post the last seven Facebook posts. Add every single, add detail to every single field in Google My Business and then have friends ask seven questions and answer it immediately. Do those four things. Update your Google My Business listing. Then we don't have to touch it for a week. You should be posting, but you don't have to edit it, but you're fresh. Do that, please. Your latest logos, upload them. Your latest team photos, upload them. Do it, do it, do it. Update this thing. So if you don't follow my prescription, I can't tell you you're going to get better, but the doctor ordered. That's what you need to do for Google My Business. Do it right now. Update Facebook. So uh, a few quick points for Lisa, but also pay attention to your Facebook. In Lisa's specific case, you can bring her up on LNR Wildlife Services, bring up her, uh, her Facebook uh, page. This is what I'd say to you about this, Lisa. Uh, and again, if I'm prescribing it to you and you're too busy, whether it's Lisa or anyone watching, call Spark Sites, man. We will find a budget that works for you, right? We're not, I hate the fact that people think of us as the cheap option. We're not. We're the option that will work with you. We've done a $12,000 uh, six-page website. Like we do heavy stuff, but our passion is for small business. So leverage us. Call for these following things. Here we go. Update your Facebook banner with something more than just that bat. Like it's bat season, so we could use the bat. But in Canva, add text. And this is all I'd say. It's bat season. And here's the phrase I would use for you in all of your messaging right now. It's bat season, period. It's essential that you remove them quickly. Call today. Now, you're not getting on the, I'm an essential services train, but you are using it in your branding, and they're still going to associate it. They'll get it. It's bat season. It's essential that you remove them quickly. Call today. Phone number in the banner. Do it all. Do it all. That one banner, get it uploaded. That would be a light years different, and then update your profile icon. So I know you've got the bat. I know you're back, girl, Lisa. I love it. But I would say that this needs to show that the lights are on, that you're being relevant. Um, maybe even change that to a bat, like the photo, and it just says, it's bat season. Or you could leave your logo, your little logo there, and just put over it, it's bat season call. You know, whatever you can fit in that little profile. Um, or maybe update the colors. We got to do something with that. Or I wouldn't even get crazy with messaging and texting. I might put a little ring around it, something to show that you're intentionally paying attention. It's to update, the, to update the profile icon is really just to say the lights are on. The third thing, update your about info. I looked over your about info and there was a few things filled out, but um, you even had an anniversary, a work anniversary, and it said uh, on Angie's Lhasa. I think you meant to say on, Angie, uh, on Andy's Lisa or Lisi. It should say on Angie's list, I think. 
let's get that link updated, but let's show that you're looking at the details and get those details filled out. I would fill a full description. I'd fill a full bio. There's new, um, there's new fields uh, available to you through Facebook since you've updated this last. I'd update all of your about info. And the fourth thing, I'd post relevant text graphics. Actually, let me hold off on that for the content. So, and the next, so the three things I would do for Facebook are update your banner with the text. It's bat season. It is essential that you remove them quickly. Call today. Update your profile icon and update your about info. You do, you do those three things. I'd be good with that. Lastly, or C, content marketing. So here's your content marketing plan in a nutshell. And I'm going to blaze through this. And mind you, for those watching, we actually do a paid action plan with this, right? Like we charge for this, but let's knock this out in terms of uh, creating funnels and strategic. This is tailored towards Lisa because I know Lisa doesn't want many steps. She doesn't want it to be complex. So here we go. So um, in general, you need a funnel. And that funnel will be one of two things. Post on your website, then share that on Facebook, then share that on Google My Business. Boom, that's it. Now, if you have video, I would add one step. Add it to YouTube, post on your website, post on Facebook, post on Google My Business. That is your funnel. Write it down. Put it on a dry erase board. If you have video, post it on YouTube, post it on your website, post it on Facebook, then on Google My Business. If you write up a text or a graphic, follow the same funnel. We're going to move on. Then post the following content strategy. This is what I think. First off, the rule is you post at least one time a day. Right now, you've got to be posting once a day. I personally recommend two in this market because people are spending more time on Facebook and they're asking questions. Hey, play along. Show me something teal in your, in your camera roll. Listen, I can only handle so much of this. Like I got on some of these games and I shared some of that, but like now it's too much. That means when you post, Lisa, that post is getting shoved down below these polls. Do you think it was a conspiracy? Shoved down. Do you think the virus was man-made? Shoved down. Do you think you should lock yourself in your home and you're, you're the problem with the world if you don't? Your post keeps getting shoved down. So I recommend you post at least two times a day, separate posts. So then I would have queued up the following. Uh, one of any of the following, and these will be written down in the show notes, like I said. Number one, a testimonial text graphic. Get a testimonials from your Google My Business, create a text graphic, put them into Canva and post and have those queued up and ready to go. Then I'd have a post that was a text graphic and it just says, it's bat season, call now. It's essential you remove them, call now, phone number. I would just have that. Have that ready in your brand colors. Just have it ready, have the graphic ready. Then a video or multiple videos. You're, you're really good at taking cell phone videos of bats and houses. That's great. I'm sure you have other videos. Take a bunch of video. Take a bunch of video of you crawling in under a house. You don't even have to show animals. Show, show, let people see you crawl in that crawl space, man. I think that's super fun. And then a news relevant post. So testimonial, it's bat season, call now. Uh, video or multiple videos. And then a news relevant post. Pay attention to the news. So if you get on the news, and, and, here's, and here's what I mean by that. Uh, corona and, and the economy, so it's first corona and then it's going to be the economy. These affect almost every corner of business. So for example, when I say how does corona affect your business, a news relevant post, mm, how's corona affecting wildlife? How is it creating, uh, how is it affecting raccoon behavior for people not being out as much? How is it affecting bat migrations or bat behavior or bat swarming or whatever you call it? Give us news relevant posts as it pertains to uh, pests. So talk about the pests of the day. Tell us what's going on, but make it relevant to the news. Hey, some of you guys might have noticed that rats are a little, or that raccoons are a bit more active, or you might have noticed that rats are doing this, this, or that. Post about it. So have those four types of posts, so like create a, a backlog in a note taking form or Trello or Google Keep or whatever it is. Come up with these ideas, sit down in the evening or the early morning, capture all of that. Each day, one or two of these should be going out. And then I recommend as a stretch goal, at least one time to, per week, do a Facebook Live of you actually crawling under a house or remediating something or, or doing an exclusion. Or do a Zoom where you're diagnosing with a client. A client calls you on Zoom and says, hey, or I hear a sound in the wall and and you say, here, put your phone up next to the wall or something like that. Do something that's relevant. I know you don't think that's interesting content, Lisa, but your fans do. Create fans around it. Do something Facebook Live or Zoom Live. That's my content strategy for Lisa. Uh, last, paid ads. Once you've done that, Lisa, and you see what people are responding to, I recommend you do two types of paid ads. Number one, 
the, pa- the, the post that says, that just says it's bat season, it's essential, it's bat season, call now. It's bat season, it's essential, remove them, call now. Put that ad in Facebook ads and simply blast it in your zip codes. It's that simple. You have to do that. By blasting, I mean spend 50 bucks. Spend 50 bucks. Do that. You're not eating out. Most of us aren't eating out this, uh, this month, right? Or we're eating out less. Find $50. Find 100 bucks. If you can afford to find more, if you can't find less, but do something. Do something. The second type of paid ad I would do is, uh, is your, your top performing ad from the content strategy we just listed in the last step. Whichever of those starts to perform the best, then throw another $25, $50, $100 into that over a two-week period. Your other ads should be running all the time. So if you know that you only have $50 for the next month, fine, do it. Set the time on that ad to be a month long. Set the budget, the total budget for that to be $50, not $50 a day. Sometimes you guys do that. Um, but do that, set that ad, and you're good to go. Boom. That's my recommendations. That's my custom case study of Lisa Resigliano's l services. If you stuck around, thank you for sticking around. I really appreciate that. We talked about marketing. We talked about the three principles. Cut strategically, not smash. Invest in second order, second wave thinking now and read the room. And then with Lisa's site and your web presence, update your website, update your Google My Business, update your Facebook, um, uh, get your content marketing going and do paid ads. That's my prescription for the day. We're going to dial out of here. I've been talking way too long. This show has gone on way too long. I promise not to go so long in the future. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I hope this has been educational. I hope this has helped. I hope this has been freaking meaty. I hope you love it. I hope you act on it. And if you act on it and post in the comments below, we'll give you a special gift. But you have to act on it. You have to show proof of acting on it. I'll send you a special gift. Here's to you today, igniting your own life of explosive significance. Thanks so much. Have a great one.